Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Naz and today I am going to discuss about sarcoidosis. So sarcoidosis is a chronic granulomatous disease and its granulomas are non-caseating. That is, they are not caused by any infective agents, they are inflammatory. And uh, there is no necrotic base. The disease is of unknown etiology and it involves multiple systems. So the disease mostly occurs in the age of 20 to 40 years and it affects female more than male. It typically occurs in African American population. The constitutional symptoms may include fever, malaise, fatigue and weight loss and these symptoms can be absent in many patients. So lungs are most commonly involved in 90% of the cases. The patient may present with dry cough, dyspnea on exertion. Occasionally there will be fine rails on examination without wheezing. There will be bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy as seen in the x-ray. There are different x-ray stages which I will discuss later. The skin is the most common extra pulmonary presentation. There will be erythema nodosum that is reddish circular uh, macules present on the shins of the legs. And there will be nasal cutaneous sarcoid which is known as lupus perneo as shown in the picture. CNS involvement may present with facial nerve palsy, sign and symptoms of a space occupying lesion and peripheral neuropathy. In cardiovascular system, there will be cardiac arrhythmias, heart block or sudden death can occur. Hepatobiliary involvement may present as granulomatous liver disease and splenomegaly, whereas in kidneys there will be renal spoons. Eye involvement is characterized by anterior uveitis. What is uvea? Uvea is the combination of ciliary muscle, iris and choroid plexus. So anterior uveitis is more common than posterior uveitis and there will be Sika syndrome. What is Sika syndrome? Sika syndrome is lymphocytic infiltration of lacrimal or salivary glands. It is uh, an autoimmune disease. I think you must have heard about Jogren syndrome. It's also known as Sika syndrome. In the gland, there will be lacrimal gland enlargement and parotid gland enlargement. So there will be increased level of serum angiotensin converting enzyme. It is because the cells which are surrounding the granuloma produce this enzyme. Therefore, these will be elevated, but it is a non-specific marker, but it can assist in the monitoring of disease activity. Hypercalcemia will be there due to the formation of vitamin D by alveolar macrophages. Hypercalciuria is also there because of increased production of calcium and increased secretion there will be increased ESR and increased immunoglobulins because of inflammation process and there will be lymphopenia which is a characteristic finding if you see in any scenario when there is bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy along with lymphopenia it means it is a case of sarcoidosis so these are two important things Pulmonary function will show restrictive pattern due to presence of fibrosis. There will be deranged liver function test. In active disease, there will be increased lymphocyte count and increased CD4 to CD8 ratio. So the biopsy is the most accurate test. It can be obtained by a transbronchial approach and it can be done from lymph node. It will show non-caseating granulomas. As I have told you earlier that non-caseating granulomas occur in the inflammatory diseases and uh, there will be no necrosis. However, in caseating granuloma which occur in infective disease like tuberculosis, there will be necrosis. There are four stages of sarcoidosis that can be seen on chest radiograph. Stage one is bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy which is the hallmark of disease and it is shown in picture A. Stage 2 include bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy along with parenchymal infiltrates as seen in picture B. Stage 3 includes parenchymal infiltrates without lymphadenopathy as shown in picture C. And stage 4 includes pulmonary fibrosis as shown in picture 4. The treatment includes in acute diseases, bed rest and NSAIDs will work. Indication of corticosteroids that is prednisolone occurs when there is parenchymal lung disease, uveitis, hypercalcemia, neurological involvement, renal impairment or cardiac involvement. In these cases, corticosteroids will be given. The signs of poor prognosis are if age is more than 40 years, if this is Afro-Caribbean ethnicity, persistent symptoms for more than 6 months, 
the involvement of more than three organs lupus perneo and stage 3 or 4 on the chest x-ray so this is the end of the lecture i hope you learned something if you do please like my video and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you for watching